Hi, I'm Tim Phelan. In EMS, we're all familiar with the challenges in caring for our cardiorespiratory patients. There's confirming intubation, monitoring tube placement, assessing the effectiveness of our treatment, and of course, documenting it all. Now we're adding capnography to your medic bag of tricks, and it's good news. You might be surprised. Capnography is a powerful assessment tool, and not just for the intubated patient. Capnography is a window into a patient's ventilatory status. It's the only window into their ventilatory status. And it's especially important in certain types of patients, for example, patients with uh, respiratory problems, to be able to rapidly, objectively, and accurately assess how effectively they're breathing. Let's start with the patient's breathing. Respiration has two phases. Oxygenation, inhaling oxygen, measured by pulse oximetry, and ventilation, exhaling CO2, measured by capnography. They're two completely different functions requiring different monitoring. Oximetry measures oxygen saturation at the level of the blood cell. Capnography measures CO2 exchange in the lungs. It's same for the intubated and the non-intubated patients. Capnography is a flexible monitoring modality. What I mean by that is it can be used in intubated and non-intubated patients. It can be used in neonates and geriatric patients. It has applications for the intubated patient, well-documented applications, including verification of endotracheal tube placement, continuous monitoring of tube position. Uh, those were the original indications. Uh, it's very useful in uh, cardiac arrest for monitoring the effectiveness of cardiac compressions for being the first and earliest indicator of return of spontaneous circulation. Now the larger applications for capnography and the more exciting uh, and newer applications are with the non-intubated patients. And those are for objectively uh, gauging the severity of asthma and COPD, as well as tracking response to treatment, both in asthma and COPD and in hypoventilation and hyperventilation. Now, capnography is a breath-to-breath -breath measure. That is, every time you exhale, you produce a CO2 waveform. So it's a real-time objective assessment of the effectiveness of breathing. Okay, let's look at the information capnography gives you. End tidal CO2 is a number, the maximum amount of CO2 during exhalation. That's useful information, but it's not the whole story. It's kind of like how knowing the heart rate tells you something about the cardiac status, but to get more detail, you have to look at the ECG waveform. For more detail on a patient's respiratory status, you have to look at the capnography waveform. Think about reading a capnography waveform the same way you read an ECG. Here is a normal CO2 waveform with its characteristic box-like or rectangular appearance. It represents the CO2 concentration over time and has three critical elements. One, the ascending phase, which represents the rapid increase in CO2 concentration during early exhalation. Two, the gently sloping alveolar plateau, which represents the uniform concentration of CO2 from alveolus to nose. And three, the descending phase, which represents the beginning of inhalation where the CO2 concentration rapidly drops back to zero. The end of the alveolar plateau represents the maximal concentration of CO2 in the breath. This is called the end tidal CO2, which is the number that you see on your monitor. It's not hard to read waveforms. You've learned to read ECG waveforms. This is going to be easy. Just like changes in the ECG waveform can have significance, so can changes in the CO2 waveform. Compared to ECG, it's simple to spot significant changes. Here are some of the more common variations from normal. Capnography can help you immediately recognize changes in the respiratory pattern, just like you use an ECG to tell the difference between tachycardia, bradycardia, and a normal rhythm. You can use the CO2 waveform to tell the difference between a rapid respiratory rate or hyperventilation and a slow respiratory rate or hypoventilation. You can also use the shape of the CO2 waveform to tell you about specific disease states. The most common abnormality in shape of the CO2 waveform occurs with bronchospasm, 
in asthma and COPD patients. There you have a change from the normal box-like or rectangular appearance of the waveform to a curved or shark-finned appearance of the waveform. From a medic's perspective, there's plenty to like about capnography. It's quick to set up, easy to read, and it works the same for everyone. Neonates to adults, intubated and non-intubated. And we're not talking about heavy equipment, complex procedures. So it won't slow you down. In some ways, it can speed you up, like in identifying breathing problems. It's a common misconception that people think that all they need is pulse oximetry in order to measure how effectively a patient is breathing. That's just not true. Pulse oximetry measures oxygenation. Capnography measures ventilation. Try this experiment. Hook yourself up to a monitor. Now hold your breath. Immediately, your CO2 waveform will go flatline. There's no exchange of CO2. You're not breathing effectively. On the other hand, your, your oxygen saturation is unchanged for anywhere from one, two, three, four minutes. This time difference is critical when you're managing a patient with an airway problem. There is no better way to document how your patient is breathing. With capnography built into your monitor, you can record the waveforms at any moment for the patient record. Successful intubation, document it. Document continuous tube placement during transport, and again at arrival at the ED. You can use capnography to document pre and post treatment changes, just like you'd use a rhythm strip to document pre and post changes when you're treating an arrhythmia. For example, an asthmatic. Pre-treatment, you'd expect them to have a curved waveform, characteristic of bronchospasm. After effective treatment, maybe one, two, three nebs, you would expect their waveform to revert to a normal rectangular appearance. Document that. You can also use capnography to track and trend the patient's conditions over time, both in asthma and COPD, patients who are hypoventilating. You want to know about these patients and you want to know any changes in their clinical status immediately and you want to document that. Like I said, it's a powerful tool to help you assess, treat, and manage your patients more effectively. Capnography is easy to use, it's easy to learn, it makes a difference in the intubated and non-intubated patient, and it provides you with valuable documentation. Overall, capnography can enhance your patient care. So get it, use it, it makes a difference.